we'd like to welcome Coach Lee, and he is ready for questions. Where can we start, Coach? How about front row to the left? Drew DeArman, WZZN Radio in Huntsville, Alabama. Coach, I wanted to ask you about kind of the, how you've put together your organization so far. I know recruiting is the lifeblood of any program, but uh, I've featured him on my show several times, and he's been a stalwart in the recruiting industry. But talk about adding someone like Barton Simmons and what he's going to mean to your university. Well, I mean, you said it, recruiting's the lifeblood. And I think for us, you know, recruiting at Vanderbilt looks different than recruiting anywhere else. And that's not a bad thing. We see that as an advantage to us, but we have to take that attitude towards it. I mean, his, his uh, intelligence within recruiting, the outside the box thinking, seeing it from a different perspective, not just, um, again, regurgitating a model from somewhere else, but saying, you know, how do we do this in, in, with impact and effectively at Vanderbilt? Uh, he's been fantastic, and the great thing about it is, you know, there's only going to be growth in that role because it is different, right? I mean, he's going from being outside to being inside, and so now you start talking about managing systems and, and scouting and, and, and people. There are layers to that, but we're, we're excited and feel like we're heading in a great direction with recruiting, and that flywheel slow turn is building momentum. Well, more than more than yeah, you know, sure. I think indicative of his of his abilities as a thinker, an analyzer. I mean, he's a smart guy. Smart people figure things out. You know, um, we have fun, and, and part of you know we had a friendship that goes back to middle school. That's not why he's here, though. I mean, this was born of our conversations when he was still an analyst and I was a coach throughout my career where we would just talk about what are the measures that are important? What are the things, what are the matrix that we need to use or that are effective or impactful in evaluating and projecting growth in a player, within a player? Um, and those, to have those uh, conversations now in the office are a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, we feel, we feel really good about it and feel like, again, there, there will only be growth in that area for us, which is exciting. Coach, to your right, front row. Hey, Coach. Chase McKay, ESPN 1025 The Game in Nashville. A lot's been made about uh, having, having your players earn their number, earn the logo on the helmet, go through that reset that you've talked about. How rewarding has it been to, to see these young men go through that process and grow as individuals but also grow as a team? It's been probably the most rewarding thing that I've experienced in my career, I think. Just... Um, you know, we do these things for us. They're not for anyone else. We understand the context and the significance of what we're doing. And we're trying to create something special that's shared, it's together. And um, you, you don't have to train people to be selfish anymore, but you have to train, we all need training to be unselfish and to think of others before ourselves. Um, and you know, the jersey number uh, idea wasn't something that I, had my mindset on, um, you know, any time I was going to get a head coaching job, this is what I do. It was, it was more about seeing the need and filling the need and knowing that this team needed a reset at a level where we stopped identifying ourselves through things that don't matter and started to identify as teammates first, as workers second, and as a collective effort that's charging towards a common goal. And so um, what, what we've seen is they've earned their numbers. Uh, what, what we saw when they earned their way into the new locker room um, is the excitement, the exuberance, the spirit of a team that's on a mission. And um, we'll continue to do that. And it starts with me. You know, um, they know, my players know well that there's not one year in my 16 of coaching that validates me for this job. I don't deserve it. I have to earn it. And that's every day. And so even those that have earned the number, it's not an ending for them. Uh, it is truly a beginning, and now they're to pull their teammates to their jerseys too. Coach to your right, front row. Coach Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. Um, when you look at your you know, year one, what would you say your, your main focus is in order to start turning the program around? Well, we, we've insulated our program, and we, we're, you know, we're rehabbing internally first. I mean, everyone wants to have an opinion about Vanderbilt football, but I'm most concerned about the opinions that are in our building. That starts with everything that our players meet is different than it was in the past. Um, I'm not recruiting to the past. I'm recruiting to the potential. Um, I hired a coaching staff that's in total alignment and total lockstep with the vision for what's possible at Vanderbilt. That's what we focus on. And what I need is a team that, that sees that vision and, 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 wor and works to actualize that vision every single day. 
um, you know, because what happens when you uh, protect the internal perception or grow the internal perception, you, you, you fuel external confidence. And a team that is going to be exposed um, in the arena uh, to, comp to you know, going to be measured against an opponent needs to know a lot about themselves first. Um, and so that's where the, the focus, that's where the effort's been. And, and um, you know, it's a, every day we're, we're a work in progress. Every day there may be a new need or an adjustment to what we're doing, an adaptation, just to get this team in position to be the best it can be in 2021. Coach, to your left on the second row. Uh, Alex Scarborough with ESPN. I'm, I'm curious what you remember last year from, from Alabama tight end Jaleel Billingsley. But beyond that, the, the tight end position, how do you see the growth there in, in dynamic playmakers that we've seen the last few years and what they do to a defense? Billingsley was fantastic and was incredibly challenging to defend because he had skills that made him really hard to cover, but he was physical enough to block and create problems in the run game. Um, the tight end position is a position that um, can be a game changer. That's a big target in the red zone. Again, uh, anymore that becomes a threat in space. Um, and, you know, as you nickel out and, and teams will move tight ends to receiver positions now, and maybe you have a 5'10 guy on a 6'6 guy. I mean, it's just, it, it can create a lot of issues. Um, certainly that's a position we're interested in recruiting at a high level. Um, we feel like there are plenty of tight ends in our footprint that are looking for what we offer. And um, it, it's a place where, where you know, a, a, an adva a tactical advantage can be gained on the field. And so, um, you know, um, at Notre Dame, we had, we had a number of really good ones there too. It's, it's a, as a defensive coordinator, it it's just creates a lot of challenges for you. Coach, to your right, second row. Chrissy Freud, Sports Illustrated. What are your expectations for Ken uh, Seal specifically? And does he remind you of any other quarterbacks that maybe you've seen or coached in the past? Well, right now my expectation is that he competes for the starting job. I mean, I, you know, we have Jeremy Musa and, and Mike Wright that are that are um, you know that are going into fall camp uh, for the for the best man to earn it. That's not to take anything away from Kenny, but it's also to say that if we're going to be in an environment that everyone's to earn it every day, that needs to be a part of our mantra heading into position battles too. Um, Kenny had a great winter and spring. I think he's developed as a leader. I've, I see his confidence increasing. Um, you know, he has the ability to, with his athleticism, to extend plays um, and, to, and to convert first downs. Um, and, and he has arm talent, you know, and I think those two things at Vanderbilt are going to be at a premium. But I would be remiss if I didn't say that, you know, Mike Wright, Mike Wright has developed so much um, through the spring. He had a terrific spring game. Uh, and, and I'm really excited to see what he's capable of this fall. And then again, Jeremy Musa, who you know is as competitive as any of them, um, you know, as he as he works to to um, you know to, to hone his skills this fall too. It's going to be exciting to to know that we have three guys that can compete with each other, that can sharpen each other, and that'll make our team better by the time we're playing. Coach, to your left, front row. Trudy Harmon, WZZN Radio, Huntsville, Alabama coach. I wanted to ask about three guys from my area, and uh, we had a chance to meet one of them earlier, Davion Davis, great young man. How do you see him fitting into your team as you've learned more about him? And then also uh, Malik Langham, another defensive lineman, and Dericky Wright. Well, that's three really good ones, right? So maybe we need to get down there and recruit a little more. Um, I, all th Davion has become the heartbeat of our team. Um, he's He's a guy that's respected amongst his teammates. It's, it's all rooted in his work. Um, I, I mentioned this earlier, but you know, he, he early on in the process displayed a commitment to kind of the, the new method for doing things that, that just stood out. I mean, it, he did it without flinching. It was like, okay, you know, he, he wants desperately to be great. He wants to win. And so uh, what he's learning to do is now shift focus from doing it for himself to doing it for the people around him and bringing them with him. But what an incredible heartbeat, what, a, what an incredible um, young person that, you know, hopefully unlocks a new level of performance within this new program. Uh, with Malik, um, you know, I, I think just from a, a comfort level standpoint, just seeing him function in our program, the, the strides he's made since we arrived is incredible. I mean, he's He's, um, he's obviously got skills. He's a big, physical, imposing 
uh, player. Um, but I, I just see him walking around with a little more swagger, with a little more confidence. And I can tell that he's gained comfort in what he's doing. He's established relationships with coaches that have allowed for him to, again, unlock another level of performance. Very excited for, for, for him through fall camp to earn what, what he wants for himself. And then uh, with Dericke, um, you know, I recruited Dericke, uh, you know, back out of high school. I knew what kind of player he was. I mean, here's a guy that has a frame that could be a defensive end, but has skills to play safety. It's incredible. Um, you know, we, we had to get him um, on track off the field, um, you know, and that's, that's normal growth and maturity that anybody um, would experience. Uh, Dericke's dealt with a lot in his life. I mean, he's had a tragedy that surrounded him that's, that's, um, that we've had to kind of put arms around him and support him through it. What I've seen from him this summer, again, is, um, you know, he, he's hitting his stride. He's, you know, it's funny, I mean, it's the little things, right? Th these guys are young and they're developing, but, um, you know, he, he, he's getting his rest, his face is filled out, he's got energy and enthusiasm with everything he does. Um, and, and now it's a matter of going to play. N none of this with any of these three guys, um, you know, predicts that they're going to be successful in, in, in our season. It's about they're doing everything that they can do right now to be the best people and players they can be. And once we start practice in August, it'll be about actualizing that work on the football field. And it's all there for them to, to earn it. And all three of those guys have a chance to be really impactful for us. Coach, another question on the right, front row. Uh, what are your expectations this year on both for your offense and, you know, on the defensive side of the ball as well? Offensively, um, you know, I, I, I want a, an attitude. I want an attitude and, uh, and uh, a style of play that's physical that had, can change the pace, that uses shift motion and formation to create matchups. And when we create those matchups, we finish with catches. Um, let's design to create space for our players and let's get balls to our playmakers so that they can go do what they do. We're gonna finish drives with touchdowns in the red zone and that's how we're gonna be successful on offense. It's an attitude. Um, on defense, you know, obviously, I mean, if you turn uh, the film on and watch a defense play, it's all about being effort-based. It's about knowing your structures, but it's about playing really, really hard, playing harder, longer than your opponent. And so it's the swarm of the football, it's multiple hats at the finish. Um, again, we, we have to be uh, structurally sound. We have to know, you know how we design defensively around the opponent's strengths. But I wanna see 11 guys that are playing together and playing, playing hard. And if we can do that, you know, we're, we're going to be competitive and we're going to be in those close games late that a, a high character team will win. Final question, Coach, here on the right front row. Coach, you, you went to Vanderbilt, played at Vanderbilt, so you know what, what that is like. To see the financial commitment that's been made from the university, the support of Chancellor Deermeyer and Dr. Lee, how does that make you feel not only as the football coach but as an alum? Proud. I'm proud. You know, I, I think... Um, as the coach, it makes me excited because, you know, the, the fact that I could be um, responsible for this program in a moment where you have this alignment of leadership and resources. I mean, um, to work for Chancellor Deermeyer, excuse me, <clears throat> to work for Candace Lee, Tommy McClellan, um, the leadership in our department, I mean, um, it's personal to Candace, you know, and I like that, we just, I relate to that, you know, like, we want so desperately for this program to reach its potential. Uh, Chancellor Deermeyer with the big vision and the big push, and it takes that. Um, I, I feel so lucky to have someone in that position that is, that is supporting and pulling for our program. Um, and so as the coach, I'm just excited. As an alum, I'm very proud. This is long overdue, um, but we have a chance to do it right. And so part of my uh, responsibility in this role is to ensure that this this facility gives us relevance for a long time and um, I'm determined to do that but so excited about the vision for it and what it can be. Coach thank you very much for your time. Okay. Thanks.